Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a little still water pattern. This one's one that I call a flashback damsel and it's a damsel fly pattern. Basically the damsel fly nymphs are available all season long when you're fishing still water and I find that these are a great searching pattern when you don't see any uh, specific uh, insects hatching. I find these are kind of a nice uh, fly to throw in and around the banks if you've got some weed structure uh, pull it over top of that this one is weighted with some bead chain eyes if you need to go a little bit lighter you can use some monofilament eyes if you want to go heavier go ahead and use some brass or even lead if you really want to get this down deep but typically we're going to be fishing these uh, closer to the surface don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw that I do for some flies that we tie in the channel, stickers, as well as some fly tying materials. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to get a fresh hook in the vise. We're going to be using a fire hole 718 in a size 10. And we're typically tying this in sizes 8 down to a 12. If you've got some smaller bead chain eye, you'll probably want to use that for size 12 or smaller. For thread, we're going to be using some olive 8 dot or 70D. We're going to be using um, the UTC olive here today. We'll just tie on right behind the eye. We're just going to lay down a base layer of thread just to get things secure. This is always nice just so that you don't have material slipping around on the bare hook shank. Just clip off that tag end. And we'll wind our thread not quite all the way up to the eye of the hook. We're going to leave a little bit of space, a couple eye widths back. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to clip a set of two beads off of a bead chain. This is a 3.2 millimeter bead chain I've got here. So we're just going to figure eight these eyes on. So we just want to tie them on diagonally on the hook shank. And we're going to go both ways. We're going to crisscross that. And then we're going to take some a few wraps underneath the eyes and on top of the hook shank. And then every once in a while, We'll just uh, pull the thread tight and that'll just help secure those eyes on there. It takes a few wraps to make sure that we get that nice and tight. It doesn't have to be absolutely secure, but you don't want them flopping around uh, with no effort. So one thing I'll also do sometimes is just add a drop of head cement or a little bit of glue on the thread wraps. In between the eyes and that'll help stiffen it up a little bit as well and then we're just going to add a few more wraps of thread over top of that and that kind of lets the glue soak into the thread wraps and really helps secure those eyes on there so when you feel that's secured well enough we'll go ahead and grab our next material we're going to be using a little bit of olive marabou there's a couple different ways you can tie this in, but we're just going to pull off a small stack here. We don't need too much for this damsel fly nymph. We want to keep the fly pattern somewhat uh, sparse and thin. Clip off those butt ends. And I like to tie right in behind the eyes and then pull everything on top of the hook shank as I tie it down. And that just cut helps to keep the body nice and even. Now if you wanted a wispier tail I would have tied those in a little bit further but I like a little bit of a fatter tail here so I'm just going to pinch and pull off the extra length. Now if I tied those in just so that the tips were exposed you'd have a little bit of a wispier tail. I'm going to grab a piece of brassy sized gold wire and we're going to tie that in just along the side and towards the bottom at the base of the tail. Tie that in along the length. Again, 
just keeping everything nice and even. I'm going to grab some large sized pearl tinsel. Uh, you can also use Mirage or um, any other color that's somewhat transparent. And I'm going to stick that right in between the eyes on top of the hook shank. You can let that go a little long if you need to. And we just want to, as best we can, keep that right on the top of the hook shank. And we'll wind that down right to the base of the tail. And then we can wind our thread back up a bit. And then we're going to dub this body. So for the dubbing on this, it's a custom blend. I've got a little bit of olive. You can see a little bit of uh, gold iris uh, ice dubbing in there or Angelina fiber and a little bit of black in there just to kind of model it a little bit, kind of uh, darken the color. Gives it a little bit more natural look in my opinion. So we're going to dub on a thin noodle and we're going to wrap that towards the back. And um, I'm not going to go too heavy on this. Try and get those dubbing noodles as thin as possible. And some of those fibers are going to pull out, and that's fine. If you want, you can always go back and trim that up a bit. So this is one of the custom dubbing blends that I did. If you want, I'll leave a link in the description. You can find that and do one for yourself. So we'll pull over the uh, tinsel and just secure it in right behind the eyes. And you'll notice here that I'm actually going, adding a few more wraps, figure eighting in between the eyes. And that'll really hold that tinsel in and also add a little bit more fortification to the eyes here. Now we're going to wrap our ribbing. We just want to be careful that we're not twisting or pulling over the wire too hard you just want to kind of sit it on top of the back there rather than pulling it because what will tend to happen is that tinsel that you've taken there it'll tend to want to pull over and again with tying off the wire I like to just add a couple extra wraps in between the eyes around the hook shank just to make sure that that's not going to go anywhere I'm going to pull that wire tight and give it a few twists helicopter it off there you go you can see it's uh, nice and straight on there and that's not going to move so the next material that we're going to use i've got some olive dyed ring neck pheasant rump and these are sort of the feathers that are not quite rump i guess these are on the back of the body uh, but they make a nice soft hackle if you don't have olive dyed natural, we'll do fine. If you don't have uh, pheasant, go ahead and use uh, your favorite soft hackle here, something like a Hungarian partridge. So we've stripped off the uh, fluffy stuff and prepared the feather so that we can tie it in by the tip. We'll fold that tip back, make sure that that feather's in there nice and secure and it's not going to pull out easily. We'll trim off the tip. We've got a little bit left behind. That'll be fine. We don't want to make this too heavy, uh, but maybe one, one and a half wraps is plenty for this. So you just stroke all the feathers backwards and we'll wrap them around the hook shank once. And then we'll wrap backwards a little bit just so that we cover up the stem before we trim that off. You just want to try and get that as close as possible. Snipped off. And then we'll pull all the fibers back and give a couple more wraps just to make sure everything's secure in there. Clean up any loose ends. And now to finish off the fly, we're just going to add a little bit more dubbing here. Again, we'll just add a thin noodle. You just want enough to kind of figure it through the eyes and build a little bit of um, a body in front of the collar that you put in with your uh, representation of legs there. 
That looks pretty good. We'll add just a touch more right in front of those eyes just to kind of complete the silhouette. And that looks pretty good. So now all we need to do is add a whip finish and a little bit of head cement if you want to really secure that. But there's your basic, just a uh, uh, flashback damsel nymph. And as I said, this is a great little still water pattern. And you can tie this in a few different colors. We've got the olive. You can definitely play around with the different olive colors into kind of a light pale morning dun um, or some even some dun colors will work well. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly pattern, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.